Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, on tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, Road Redemption finally exits early access. And guess what? Kind of looks good. Question mark, though. And Feral, they've teased another game on that wacky radar of theirs because it's almost 2018 and we're, we're still playing Guess the Game for reasons. The Culling came out of Early Access, and it didn't really seem to do anything for it. And someone is making an open source ferrier? Uh, why though? Public service announcement for people who own a lot of games on Steam. <laughs> you really think you own them. <laughs> and uh, NVIDIA fixes a driver, just for me. Hail Aaron Plattner. It's kind of brilliant. I've been stoned near at LGC Actual, switching the bits, running the boards, doing the nightmare fuel, as you guessed it, on all three ends. Nothing but penguin sauce, all the Linux, all the love. It's brilliant. Joined every week by our man on the island. Yes, he went back to the island because some Hello. people are old and remember <laughs> lost. Um, <laughs> that, that's one Pedro Mateus. And um, joining us, the Jersey boy. No, he's not a Canadian. No, he's not the man up north. He, he's actually quite hot. Mm, and it's been yes. a bit warm in there as well, right? One Master Tian, you know him Hello. as Empty. And together, with your help, joining us in Discord and Shout Realm Dynamic to help us form that last little bit, known as Cocaine Voltron. Mm. Before we get started, we'd like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Um, Pedro, you got a new toy. You got a box with something in it, buddy. I got a very square box. Oh, shit. Look at it. Ooh. It's pretty. Yes, it's a sixteen hundred. Uh, the um, it's the uh, Ryzen sixteen hundred six core, twelve thread. Uh, it was according to the uh, production numbers here. It's seventeen thirty three PGT. So it was the wafer was in Texas, supposedly, and it's week thirty three. So that's August around sometime. So this is a almost a new one, which is neat. Means I won't hit the uh, the Ryzen bug. Still waiting on the motherboard and the RAM. That'll be over the next couple of weeks. That'll All I'm hearing is point. somebody needs to order you a top end X399 board. <laughs> <laughs> yes, completely pointless. Please. Please. <laughs> hey, man. Um, uh, what's going on? Empty has been a while. Been a hot minute. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Now, uh, Jordan hit me up on Wednesday. Apparently, he's uh, bailing out on Canada to, you know, fly across the ocean for some crazy reason. So, yeah, I've been uh, stupid busy, and I'm completely unprepared for this, so brace yourselves for train wreck, everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not a whole lot to report over here. Uh, earlier in the week, I decided to play with Blender and do a thing. If you were watching the produced version of this, you've already saw the thing I made, and I got done at the end of that, like, 14-hour business uh setting up the gpu computer i'm still gonna make a quick how-to on that because there's not a very clear it's not hard to do but it's, it takes a minute to put everything together uh getting that running with two gpus and uh the right settings that you need to make it worth your time it's kind of brilliant i do enjoy it but uh pedro there's something that's worth our time each and every single week it, that's a horse. Well, you say that but the only thing that's actually worth it is whenever you hit it and a little squirt comes out. It makes that funny little squirting noise. I don't know where I'm going with that. It's the Steam Linux. Update of the week. Come on, enthusiasm, people. Enthusiasm. <laughs> I, was, I was trying. You were. You All were, right, you were. so uh, you think you own things on Steam? <laughs> uh, what, is, what is Eurogamer saying here? Whatever they're saying, they're saying it very small because their website's aligned poorly, and I, I'm not a huge fan of it. But as uh, most people already know, man, uh, Pedro, I think it'll back me up on this. You don't. Oh, you you basically get a license to. Oh yeah. Um, play your video you games. A, a license to lease mm -hmm. the games as long as you're alive. And well, someone decided to posit the question: What happens to your um, library after you die? Apparently, so you get a wicked gamer, receding uh, hairline, One of man. the one of the editors decided to ask Valve, they went through Steam support, uh, and asked them, okay, so if I want to leave uh, my library to my friend after I die, that was the editor that's looking very disappointed in that picture there, um, how can I do that? And Valve came back and said, 
well, you can't. Uh, each and every single, uh, because according to the Steam end user license agreement, transferring or selling or just changing ownership of a Steam account is not allowed. So the only way you could do it, that is by getting special permission. And you can't get that special permission from Steam support. So how do you do it? Well, that's kind of the question that they asked and they don't know. So right now, the only way to transfer your Steam library is to get that special permission. Good luck on that. And even if you write a will and say, my library goes to the next of kin or my wife or whomever, uh, unless uh, you also leave a substantive uh, chunk of cash to your lawyer for them to take Valve to court and set a precedent, I think you're kind of boned. I don't know, man. I mean, when you think about it, this is like uh, if you it's a non-transferable warranty. You see this a lot with products that yet yeah, has a warranty until you sell it. Then the, it's a null and void. But mm-hmm. um, it, I was looking it's like, yeah, you could do all that. Or or am, am I crazy empty when I thought about this? It's like just put them on your family sharing plan. You're done. Call it a day. Hit the fucking lights on Pretty your much, way out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just rest in steam. Uh, yes, as long as your account stays active and someone has your password and all mm-hmm. that stuff. I don't know. The, the real joke here is that Steam calls themselves like a game seller and they don't sell anything. They just license it to you. And that's how they can that's how they can get away with all of this is that they're not actually selling it to you. They are licensing it. Mm. Uh, yeah, what can you do? I I uh I don't really have much sympathy for for this because they make it very clear in their terms of service exactly how this works. Like, <laughs> should you be able to pass it on? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I kind of understand. I mean, Steam definitely doesn't want you to because guess what? They want that other person to buy all those games. Buy them all again. Oh yeah, right. that, that's ten thousand percent the reason. I understand it though. I kind of listen. Steam doesn't try to pretend. It's not like they're lying to you. You know what you're getting into once you start this wacky adventure with them. But um, you know, Pedro, I, I, I bet you we couldn't have um, two Steam stories in a row involving death. Oh yes, we can. Yeah. Not the death of people specifically, but the death of games or the death of the ability to get those games. It doesn't sound so well, but yeah, it's still death in a way. So someone on Linux underscore gaming compiled a bit of a list uh, of the games that were available for Linux at one point, and now they're not anymore for one reason or another. You have a few of those like Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition, which uh, the current publisher decided to pull from Steam because they're assholes, Gearbox. Uh, and then you also have things like Earth Year 2066, which were pulled from Steam because they're shit, and Valve actually stepped in to pull them from Steam. So, yeah, that's uh, the two big ones. There are some other games in that list that fall into other uh, reasons as to why they got pulled, like Dirt Showdown, for example. It's just there's no point in having it up there anymore. And well, to be no, fair, no, no, no. Dirt Showdown got pulled because of um, licensing issues. Yeah. With the soundtracks and all that. And there's a couple of things on there that are like, uh, th- there have been some corrections made, like uh, Raven's Cry, technically true because they nerfed that game mm-hmm. and then they came out with um, <laughs> Curse of the Raven's Cry. released it on another they game. They just renamed it. Right, what right. Yeah. And uh, then that ended up getting pulled from Steam for a hot minute and came back. Um, <sighs> I didn't see it. This kind of read like a list. Oh, and of course, Necro. We covered that way back oh, when. Oh, yes. So, um... The only one oh, of yeah. these that I was mad about was is them pulling Megaton Edition and replacing it with their, like, 25th anniversary or whatever, mm-hmm. which there is no Linux version of. Like, hey, Randy, Randy Pickford is in Eat full it. effect. <laughs> yeah, Earth you're, in, you're right about that in Shot Realm. Yeah, Dead, Isle, Dead Island re-released as the yes. definitive edition. Same thing with Metro Last Light and Metro 2033. They're both only available now as the Redux version. Yeah. So To be fair, the, which is the version uh, you want. Original, right? yeah, Metro 2033, just a regular version, was never available for Linux, only Last Light. So that's the only one that was technically available on Linux and now it's gone. Hmm. But yeah, you can play 2033 Redux on Linux uh, as well as Last Light Redux. And those are and good they, games. 
they run better and they look better. And why would oh, you yeah. not want the Redux? And versions? they have more content. Are, are, so that's good. are you are you high? I mean, a, a, a rhetorical question. Um, <laughs> b- there's always that person though. You're like, but I want two copies. I want this one and this one. Even though they'll never go back and play the other one. I yeah, that. You you know that person's out there right now going, yeah, see? (laughs) Oh, man. Uh, What do we have up next? Uh, Concept art, I think? Screenshots, for the most part, yeah. Screenshots, yeah. Project Borealis, man. They're going to do Half-Life 3 or Half-Life 2 Episode 3. And what engine, Pedro, did they decide to do it in? Uh, Wasn't it Source? Are they doing no, they're sorts? doing it in Unreal. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So I guess this, this Source engine is just completely dead. It, it might as well not exist anymore as far as Valve is concerned. Well, as I mean, far as anyone is concerned. <laughs> this project, you know, was announced quite some time ago. And after our long, long wait, uh, we basically, yeah, all, all we have is concept art. So, um... It could literally be anything at this point. Hey, we don't know. Listen, man, they've included the electricity box, so you know they're legit. Oh, yeah. They actually say, uh, didn't they pull the textures from the original uh, Valve SS? And basically, all they did was they reworked the models. I got to admit, this model does not look French enough. Um. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, that's a very bland-looking Strider. Uh, but yeah, no, it's... It's this is nothing new. Most FPSs in the past have all had a grand like a grand scope mod announced for it at some point and all we ever see is like a couple of screenshots, some concept art. That's it. Uh I'll care about this project because I'm totally down for playing some more Half-Life even if it's not done by Valve because let's face 100% it, Valve agree don't with you make games that. anymore. Uh yeah, no, I'm totally down to play it. When I see something more than just screenshots. That's an interesting when, thing. Do you think we'll actually if. get a playable prototype of this before Black Mesa uh, no. exits early access? No. No? No. no. It's no. Not, maybe just a little chance. There's <laughs> no. <laughs> no way. If maybe if they had showed some ever. video instead of just stills, I might be a little no, bit more if optimistic. If we ever get a playable prototype of this, I will eat my words on that day. But no, again, I say no. Mm. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm, I'm trying I, to come up with more as much as I would love to see this be become a real boy. I, I don't know how no. much chance it has. Okay, hey, at least I thought it was worth the mention. Fine, jeez, guys. <laughs> yeah. What do we have up next? Up next, we have Payday Two crossing over. Really? That's how we had Enter Gungeon. <laughs> well, to Enter the Gungeon. Normally, yeah, it is. It is actually. Uh, on both sides. It's Enter the Gungeon getting some Payday 2 stuff and Payday 2 getting some Enter the Gungeon cosmetic stuff because that's all Payday 2 will ever do is just load you up with crappy DLC. Uh, MD? <laughs> well, I don't know. I think this is kind of cool. The um, Usually you see Payday 2 pulling stuff into their game, like doing cross promos with they did um, you know, Hardcore Henry and all that and... Uh, you could even get like h3 models in there mm-hmm. whereas this time it's actually putting the uh content you know payday 2 content into another game which is yeah. uh you know a refreshing change yeah and enter the gungeon is one of those games that i really like it's one of it's definitely it's not like turn-based roguelike but it's definitely it definitely qualifies as a roguelite at the very least and sure. it its biggest shortcoming is the fact that it doesn't have, like, online co-op. You can only do local co-op. But I really like this game. I'm not very good at it. I suck at it. I have absolutely no shame in admitting that. But I really like it. And it's good to see more content, even if it's just, you know, a couple of Payday 2 masks and a couple of new weapons. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, you're, when you're talking about Payday 2 only getting stuff, uh, go- Goat Simulator... Yeah, <laughs> they they introduced the heist thing, which was almost a playable version inside of almost almost a borderline. It gave you it, it wasn't as clever as the MMORPG that they did. 
Yeah, that's the, true. The I forgot about actually the went to your really Steam awesome. friends oh, list and pulled good. the names out. Right, it's like, right. oh, there's your friend. <laughs> and you think you're like, hey, pay, and you're sending IMs back. And forth, just like, I, I can <laughs> see you. You can't see me. And I was like, yo, you dicks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm talking to a bot. Oh, right. oh man. Yeah. It's good times. But that's not the only crossover we have going on this week. Yeah, we've, we've got oh, some no. more games that just keep giving here with the uh, Shovel Knight Battle Toads crossover. Naturally. Did not see that one coming. <laughs> what? Uh, this looks kind of awesome. Uh, you know, who doesn't love the Battle Toads? And who doesn't love the Shovel Knight? So uh, it sounds like a match made in heaven here. I don't know, man. Uh, it, while playing a Shovel Knight, you kick off this very special encounter by uncovering a double secret room in the Hall of Champions. Uh, Japanese language option, that's a thing. Some people will be very happy about that. Device detection and uh, icons for Switch controllers. That's pretty cool. Um, PS4 Bug controller fixes. now properly Whatever. displays share and select. I've been waiting on that. And a uh, bunch of fixes. Yeah, a bunch of fixes yeah. in this. And Bug fixes, more. whatever. I want rash, pimple, and zits. Well, uh, they're going to give it to you in spades. And That's eight. one of the things these games keep doing well. It's, oh, look, tons of new content for free. Well, they... Uh, <laughs> Hollow Knight, they've done good with that. Shovel Knight, they've yep. done good. And Shovel Knight's been out for, what, like two years now? Yeah. Quite a uh, while. It least. hasn't been two years. It's almost that but yeah it's been out for a while mm -hmm. this one entered a gungeon hollow knight um uh still waiting on that single player campaign there guns of icarus uh <laughs> keep waiting oh. see how that works out yeah I, I enjoyed hollow knight i mean it is definitely one of the more true to form hipster pixels mm -hmm. that you're going to see and uh, it definitely plays like when it has a uh, all, all the nostalgia with all the bad stuff included so <laughs> Yeah, and battle toads now. Now, yeah. now with more battle toads. So what's not to love? <laughs> Coming up next is Road Redemption, something that we have, I, I do believe, rightfully so poo pooed on because I think I I'd be willing to say up until like maybe six months ago we weren't sure that this was ever coming out or if the studio anyone was, go was going to be able to play much less Linux people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but man, here it is. It's out. It's on road redemption. I think total Bisquick and, uh, Jim Sterling. Jim Sterling. Yes. Uh, both covered it and they, they've done their little playthroughs. I've looked at it and I mean, in its current form, they've got the multiplayer sorted and, it looks all right. It looks fun. It looks like a throwback. It really reminds me of um, Road Rash on my Road 3DO. Rash. On the Where's 3DO. <laughs> I definitely got to say on the 3DO because I also had Road Rash on my Sega CD and it was just the Genesis version with some FMV cut in. So yep. <laughs> I had I had played it on the PC long yeah, it was on the PC time too. ago. I'm pretty uh, happy with a $17.99, normally $19.99 wet stinky caches. This is Unity title. This has basically had um, Linux support since day one. Now, admittedly, like it was a year later before they had controller support on Linux. <laughs> uh, currently, it's $14.04. SteamOS, good on them. Eight gigajoules of the memory to pick it up. I assume, Pedro, you've already made uh, contact oh, with yes. them. I, I have sent emails. They haven't replied, but then again, it was like Friday night when I sent the email. I'm sure so, that, yeah, after the tsunami of like, hey, everyone right. wants to. It's like, oh, uh, everyone's saying this is good, right? There's probably a lot of emails going through that inbox, so I'm waiting. It's cool. Yeah. But yeah, no, the, the price isn't actually all that bad. I was expecting bucks, yeah. uh, I was expecting much, much more. It's uh, over here in uh, Britannia. It's 1349 with the special promotion which ends on the 11th so 1499 usual price my only fear here is that this game had really bad performance for a long time mm -hmm. it looks like they cleaned it up on windows does it work on linux too yeah that is one thing we got to worry about is we're gonna have to take pepsi challenge on it for everyone and see what it comes down to for me 100% this just boils down to is multiplayer fun because yeah, that, that's really the appeal for me. And I think it'd be great in what the limitations are on multiplayer with the amount of players because I want some serious Sam 16 player 
because we can easily fill all those slots on Saturday. Oh night. yeah, <laughs> no problem. I don't know how that would work. I'm not. I'm not sure how the multiplayer in this game works at all. I'm sure it involves you getting online. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, okay. finding other CIL. people, mm-hmm. uh, then riding motorcycles down a road. <laughs> right, but is it like a big open world? Is everybody stuck on the same road together? Yeah, what it's road, road redemption, man. It's the, the same. Yeah, you have tracks, and you can go from yeah, point A to point B. It's still an arcadey racing game, and it's just going to have multiplayer which it does so yeah i'm kind of curious to see that yeah hmm. maybe if it's just race mode or whatever instead of uh yeah no no you want the combat so you can uh, uh, say disparaging remarks about each other's mother well, <laughs> or just rage, hit each yeah. other that's, that's the whole point of baseball. road redemption man is like beating the snot out of each other while attempting to race <laughs> oh, yeah crowbar right. to the skull exacto mundo so we're talking about a game questionably whether or not it ran. Let's talk about something that's mostly negative that's also out of early access. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one ever saw this one coming out nope. of early access. And this one may have been like an, a Hail Mary. It's like, please, oh, please, if we come out of early access, can we resurrect? No. No, you can't. This is the culling. Oh, the my acid, God. They modeled you're... Sandy. <laughs> 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 yeah so the culling has uh was that uh battle royale style game that was available on linux since forever ago it was an early access and the developers kept changing stuff that no one wanted them to change and ignoring the broken stuff and introducing stuff no one ever asked for nor, nor any, would anyone ever ask for that, they, that sounds like early access to me yeah, they killed the combat. Yeah, uh, the combat used to be really good, apparently, uh, in the early days of early access. But then they nerfed the shit out of it to a point where it was so bland and so stupid that it was pointless. And people said, you know what? H1Z1 is out now, so we're going to play that instead. Unfortunately, if you're a Linux user like us, you were kind of stuck with, oh, okay, so... What do we do now? Well, you sit on your thumbs for the most part because this game is dead. Really, well, okay. really dead. Okay, hundred percent. I will say the game's dead. I, I think this is the same reason we were discussing in the uh, pre-shows and of uh, with PUBG just coming in because it's the new hotness. Mm-hmm. We, we're seeing like Rust getting updates and uh, what was it? Just came out of early access. Uh, Arc. Arc. Yeah. We're seeing all the, you know, hey, remember us, guys? We're out. And the, the, the it used to be hot. Developers <laughs> are not clicking. It's like the PUBG guys need to break in all that cash because six months from now, the next thing's going to come. And all the people who just skip to the next survival mm-hmm. s- sandbox, whatever it is, you know, and the next one will be whatever, you know, space trebuchets and ponies. Show title. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, th- this is out. Uh, it does require operating system 2.7 or higher. So make sure you have that installed on your Linux with your DX11 GPU. And, uh, uh, oh, the price. What does this thing, because I kind of went, what? Uh, $24.99. Mm-hmm. 24. 18.99 pounds. Yeah. No, 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 no. Mm, they're, for, they're insane. For something with all reviews are mixed and recent reviews are mostly negative. Yeah, and it does not look like it's a completely finished game. But, hey, easy transition from one completely unfinished game to another. But this one at least has (laughs) entertainment value. Oh, yeah. This one is still actively being developed. That's golf with your friends. But um, for the month of October, it's golf with ghouls. Happy Halloween exclusive items during the event. Basically, what do you get? All right, you get the Halloween practice theme. You're going to get nine Halloween hats, four Halloween trails. It's a thing. Look, the bulls have wings because fuck you, that's why. And, you know, this game's such a busted, janky mess, but it's fun. You know what's... Unless you're Jordan, at which point it's not right. not fun I think, at all. I think we might try some of this in the after shows. And so if you're watching live, uh, make sure you have that loaded up. But hey, man, they every time they do an update, they throw in a hot mess of hot fixes, man. So... Mm-hmm. It's slowly getting I there. I guess they have to, because with each and every single update, they also introduce new jank. So they got to keep fixing that jank to keep the balance. <laughs> got to get the old jank out to bring the new jank yeah, in. Yeah, uh, right. I mean, be warned if you're thinking about picking that up, because like even the Linux version, 
for basically the better part of a month, couldn't play online multiplayer. So yeah, there, there are issues like that. It is still very much a moving target. But hey, if you want wings on your balls, ooh, um, <laughs> buy this game instead of buying arts and crafts supplies and super glue because that'll. Do you that back some not. Red Bull? <laughs> what? I don't know, man. We'll never I, I don't know. That sounds Let's like a bad on. idea too. So before we get out of here, uh. I just wanted to mention this as a shining example of, you know, green light. It's gone. You know, green light, that thing where you had that not point, not one percent chance of getting a community together to downboat a game out of into oblivion from green light with a new system, the steam, whatever the hell it's called. Just fucking right. give us your money program. Steam, throw it up there. Yeah, uh, we, we get this. Kim Jong, boom. Yes, that's right. It's a, it's a game in which Kim confronts Donald through an arcade game. Yes, I'm not kidding. And when when I say game, look, I, I don't even know what the hell it is. I don't is. even know what the it's hell you're doing. Tile there. matching game, maybe tile matching, uh, but it, it's from Asset Flip the Studio. But uh, lo and behold, um, you got to look at uh, the glowing praise from Russia, Soviet Russia's leading website review site, uh, games.mail.ru. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is a reputable gaming site. Oh, man, I that is where I go for my information. It requires um, <laughs> Linux version Core 4.2. And um, <laughs> any, any graphics. Even worse than OS 2.7. <laughs> Steam, for fuck's sake, man. It's the new version. Just just that much quality control. Holy oh, fuck Valve all. is going to get sued so bad at some point. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. They've but, just uh, given up. They don't care. Oh. You sue them, they just settle. They're like, yeah, well, we've got all the money in the world. We'll just give you some. <laughs> okay, beautiful people. That's going to do it for our Steam segment. Stay tuned for the news. We're going to be talking uh, NVIDIA drivers, Tomb Raiders, Godot, Godot, and uh, PlayStation emulator getting networking support, so they better get ready to get sued out of oblivion. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, stick around for the news. But before we get to that, it's time that we throw some love or some hate or some things at all of you who keep giving us some wet stinky caches. Yes. Wait, but, wait, wait, wait a minute. Are you trying to imply that people are supporting independent media uh, that are trying to do cool stuff with Linux and I for know, other people? 2017. To... Who knew, right? <laughs> this is crazy, crazy man. bastards. You, you're What's insane. Wrong with them? Um, but <laughs> hey, we, we got some people we need to think because if you head over to, to we got a web zone, linuxgamecast.com, the support button, we got the Amazon affiliate links. Thank you, each and every one of you. You know who you are. Um, Blowing those things up, that really helps. We got a little bit of a wish list. If you want to, want to wish us good times, you end up on uh, Frank's uh, fine, upstanding cannibal wall. We got a nice assortment there. Frank really appreciates that. It pays to have his tiara polished. But um, most importantly, we, we have Patreon, man. And I think we oh, have yes. a new patron and somebody who has entered the hallowed halls of oh, executive boy. producers. We're talking so, 103 uh, of you uh, kicking us 205 what stinky caches a week. Uh, coming up on that 250 goal. That's our next thing. Merch run is going to be brilliant. But we're not just saying, hey, man, throw money on our heads because you're fiscally irresponsible. No, we give you stuff back, don't we? Oh, yes, we do. There are quite a few posts that you will get access to, including some old, old gems, <laughs> <laughs> which... Uh, those should never be uh, up for public consumption, and one of them happens to be the full unedited version of the Slim Book review video thing. What I did—that's oh, horrifying, that's man. Horrible. I don't know. I, may, maybe you might want to rethink. That was horrible. No, you, you so might want to rethink it. You don't want to put yourself through that torture. But uh, you do get your own custom uh, extra hour of LGC Weekly, our uh, production meeting, oh, yeah. and the pre-pre shows and. Which uh, really one Mr. Tehan took a part of this week and like halfway through it, but said some interesting things until I was like, hey, man, you know, this is being recorded. Then kind of. <laughs> oh, I didn't I didn't mean those things, Sandy. I swear <laughs> I was just talking out my ass. It was awesome. Who do we have to think this week, P-Baby? 
We this week we have Hertz. Hertz. He's a new Patreon. Thank you very much. Hertz. Very, very oh, much. Man. Hertz is and awesome. Yeah, the Atomic has Hertz so good has now entered the hollowed halls. Oh, of look the at him up executive there. Washroom. Yeah, you, you get access <laughs> oh, to the executive come washroom. On in. He's an executive Toilet producer. Toilet paper is single ply. That's right. We've got our um, <laughs> own special place where we hide the other seven, well, six days of the week in my world. Um, yes, yeah, that's neat. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for hooking us up with that business. So um, that that's enough shilling. Let, let's get yeah, into Yeah, pretty much. The, so let's get, get into the, the news. news proper. And then true LGC tradition, some drivers. drivers. MD, tell us oh, about yeah, it. Yeah, we got, we got some drivers. Well, it's your usual assortment of uh, NVIDIA driver beta fixes, some some Vulcan stuff, and you know a couple of DisplayPort fixes. The the big one for me was the uh, DisplayPort audio fix, where they updated the way they were reading EDIDs and uh, made it work on more monitors and Woo-hoo. broke it for my monitor. So uh, I dug around for a while and actually found Aaron Platner uh, discussing this very subject on developer.nvidia.com. And uh, he pushed a fix, and it showed up in this beta. Thank you, Aaron Platner. My monitor no longer screams at me. <laughs> it, it's always kind of fun and kind of brilliant, because um, uh, Tihan, we, we have the same monitor. And if one thing you get early access to as a patron, sorry, I'm just plugging this because this is funny as hell, you get our Left for Brad. And mm-hmm. that's where we go through Left for Dead. And there's a great scene, because it is Jordan, myself, and empty, and did we have somebody else, or were we playing with a bot? Oh, no, Sandy joined us. Sandy, Sandy yeah. joined us, but there was a moment where, and again, Jordan, empty, and myself, one of our monitors, it has a bug where it just has this horrifying siren, and there was the a silence alarm. where we were trying to figure out who it was. And empty's like, God <laughs> damn it, it's like, oh, it's you, okay. Yeah. It's a thing, man. That is, uh, a, that is an annoying bug, and uh, the NVIDIA. DisplayPort audio bug was triggering it like mad. Mm. Oh, I'm, I'm glad fixed. that's Hail gone. Platner. Hail Platner. One of the that's things, uh, yeah, it's definitely a cool thing, man. Aaron's been cool. He always like oh, pops yeah. in on our conversations randomly, which is interesting. It looks like they're trying to sort some of the additional things. Alt tab with Vulcan. If you've been having a problem with that, they're working on that. That's supposed to work a bit smoother. And another thing with DP, giggity, DisplayPort, you pervs. Um, it should finally wake the hell up on monitors where it wasn't. And that hasn't really been a problem recently with the binary drivers from NVIDIA. But in the past, especially with our monitors, it was got to cross your fingers for a long time of whether or not, okay, let's go to the other monitor, open up NVIDIA, cut it off, cut it back on. And so, yeah, yeah, the, uh, just a quick mention, the Def talk forums, that nvidia has that's the place you need to go if you have a bug that you are pretty sure is the nvidia drivers that's causing it go there post about it just uh, they have a little post at the top uh it's sticky so just it's basically just a little script you run to get the nvidia drivers to dump whatever happened wrong and Full kudos to them. I had an issue when I changed uh, when uh, Martin got me to 1080 and I started using the 1080. Never Winter Nights, the uh, native Linux version, had an issue with the how the cloaks were rendering. And I went there and I said, look, this is happening. This only happens with the 1080. The 970 didn't have this issue, so something's up. And they said, okay, we'll run an API trace, dump it here. I did the very next driver version that was fixed neverwinter yeah, nights man. for linux came out in 2003 that's a good Kudos fix, on but you don't do hard mode you see what i do is i like to take my 980 and smear it with mayo <laughs> sometimes <laughs> that fixes the problem then run that more api trace you know you know just just to make it a little more difficult on him hey the fine fine folks over at feral interactive uh yeah they got this thing yes it's still on the far out section can i find it Wait, it's grid for Android. Nope. It's the other one. It's the other oh, one. Oh, it disappeared. Why are uh, we still doing it? There, there it is. is. <laughs> Ovain illusion, glory. And... It's probably Tomb Raider. Um, yeah. Because we're, we're still doing this bullshit. And um, 
almost 2018 coming up on it. So we got to guess what game it is. Everyone thinks it's Tomb Raider. Some people are still thinking it's F1, as they like to remember. Remind you, hey, we did 2017 on the Mac and uh, not, not on Linux, which... You know what? At the end of the day, maybe you want to take that shot. I kind of understand. There's not a, apparently not a lot of racing fans on Linux. Uh, there are a few, but uh, uh, the one that's supposedly F1 2017 for Linux is uh, one return to Westwood, West Norwood, please. Um, you, see, you see, that's bullshit because East Norwood is where the action's at. <laughs> yeah, you can actually see like the West Norwood LCD display on the bus. But yeah, F1 2017 is now out for Mac. And if it was 20, uh, F1 2017, maybe they would have already changed it. I don't know. But yeah, no. Uh, people on Reddit were speculating that the uh, the new one that's still in the quite soon, quote unquote, uh, area of the radar is most likely to be Rise of the Tomb Raider, so I am very much looking forward to that because I didn't hate uh, Tomb Raider, the 2013 version. So, yeah, better late oh, than no, never. Man, um, yes. We were both rocking the um, qua- eight, eight core AMD parts, respectively. FX8370 and when, when that game first launched on Linux, it was. Bad. I, I beat that game. I played it at 24 FERPs on a good day because I liked it so much. I played a slideshow version of this, but empty. Riddle me this. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider was a big DX12 title. It was like, oh, look at all the DX12 shit. And wouldn't it be really, really nice? Feral, call me. Um, if this came out hey, supporting at least Vulcan, Vulcan on the Linux, maybe. Yeah, that would be pretty nice. We'll yeah. see. <clears throat> That's another uh, spin of the Ooga Booga wheel. Will it? Will it not? Um, it seems like Feral... Jesus Christ. <clears throat> it seems like Feral has their uh, their OpenGL wrapper tech down pretty well, so I don't know why they wouldn't release it with Vulcan, but who knows? Oh, yeah. They, they actually... Uh, kudos to Feral on that one, because I've... Every, every week I start uh, Mad Max and I do the exact same run. I go from uh, the bit where the lady in the wheelchair is to the uh, buzzard HQ thing. I just do that run in a car to test how the frame timing is on the um, on Vulcan. And kudos to them. Ever since the last update, even with the changing driver versions and everything else it's been smooth really really smooth so yeah i think they have the vulcan wrapper conversion thingy you you gotta be careful because they chose mad max because it was about the most lego and glue stick rendering wise game that existed (laughs) in their portfolio it's true (laughs) so that's a good game to start your vulcan tech on it it is Uh, i'm saying good of them but Keep your expectations to where it should be, because if you also want to see what they were attempting with Hitman, whoo, yeah, wow. that, that, that's didn't, not didn't work out so well. <laughs> they yeah. tried with Hitman, I'll give them that, it didn't work so well. <laughs> but, I, I mean, one good thing we, we can definitely say about Ryzen, because we're all going to be rocking the Ryzen, Pedro has his, he just doesn't have it plugged in yet, um, is... It's going to force, it's already forced Intel with coffee. Like, hey, look, multi core uh, CPUs are now affordable all of a sudden, guys. And um, yeah, you're going to have to quit hammering on just uh, two cores, two threads, oh, yeah. and uh, kind of open this up. And that's just for Windows, Mac, Linux, you name it. That's going to be a thing. And that is really, really good. So I can't even pronounce this. What is it? <laughs> uh, it's Argentum. And it's a. Uh, collectible card game? It's not a trading card game. Uh, yeah, uh, it does have multiplayer, but you can't really go on and trade cards. So think Hearthstone or Faria, something like that. In fact, keep Faria on the back of your head because this game is very, very similar to that. You get a big board and you have to strategically place your creatures and your uh, obelisks or artifact, whatever they call them, It's basically taking the old Magic the Gathering, um, when positions in Magic the Gathering mattered, which was a very limited run, to be fair, because they got rid of that right quick. Uh, Well, 
with the advent of the whole, you know, digital card games being able to do what physical ones couldn't, hey, now you can actually have uh, a game where positions do matter and you can enforce that stuff. So that's nice. And actually, Argentum is very, very close to uh, what Feria does, except you don't have to place the lands in specific spots. You just place the creatures on one of your um, areas that are closest to your character, and you have to get up to the areas that the opponent is and knock down their health points. And I tried it. I The tutorial was a little bit ass-backwards, to say the least, but it works. Uh, multiplayer, I wanted to try some multiplayer, but when I went in, there was no one else online. There was literally one player online, and that was me. So that is a bit of an issue. And the thing that immediately caught my attention at that point was that they say it's a collectible card game with tactical positioning. You focus on limited randomness to allow for maximum player skill. That just said Hearthstone in my head. That's and what I, I like that's exactly what I was about to ask you. <clears throat> on a scale of one to Hearthstone, how much Hearthstone is this? It's a seven. It's a seven? <laughs> yeah. Pedro, you just said all those words and all I heard was nope. Hey man, I've kind of I've watched some people play the Hearthstones. I don't understand fuck all what's going on, but I pretend I do. And anyone who's played Magic the Gathering knows exactly what Hearthstone is. It's a boiled down digital version of a stupidly simplified version of Magic the Gathering. Again, I have no idea what Hearthstone <laughs> is. Uh, I hear all those words, and they just go in <laughs> one ear and come out as so. Nope. Man, is this open source? Yes, it is. Yeah, uh, cool. you can download it. It's. Uh, they have, it's available. Just look on the website. Uh, it's in there somewhere. They have the uh, versions for Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, the binary versions to download. I say it. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it is uh, open source, or at least they claim it will be at one point. I honestly can't That's remember. That's pretty right neat. Uh, if you want to take a look at it, don't worry, because uh, if you're watching the video version, uh, you're either on yes, our it is. There's GitHub right there. There's uh, show notes. <laughs> so all the links will be in that goodness. Our favorite little engine that could is uh, back with a update. Uh, a little late on it, but Foxy threw it in because he's a patron. And you can suggest all that business. Uh, render design explained. Godot uses a considerably different approach. Uh, saying, yeah, the render's a server and all that. Uh, they basically, what did they do? They, they've written a document just saying, this is how we do stuff. And more importantly... This is why we do it. Um, the pros and cons. I mean, it's very honest and, you know, it's reason of why they did. I, I was reading through this, man, and, and until I got down to a quote, to a quote that uh, said, what about Vulcan? And what about DX12? Because we all know DX12 is the future, bro. Mm -hmm. uh, the quote is, Vulcan still has years to go until it's properly supported in most desktops and mobile platforms. A what? It, they, I, I, I kind of tapped that's, the that's brake. That's I, I kind of tapped the brake organs right there. Um, let me see. Here it is, right? And, you know, yeah. the reasons it's may not seem obvious, but OpenGL3 can already render millions of objects. If you have hundreds of thousands of different objects, and, you know, this is basically... Uh, an explanation of which perfectly valid explanation, but you could summarize this saying, Hey, I really like open GL and that's what I'm sticking with right now. <laughs> Cause these excuses, uh, they, they do kind of read like excuses, Pedro. Oh yeah. Yeah, they do. And here's the thing. Vulcan still has years to go. What you see this LG Android flip phone supports Vulcan. <laughs> this Nvidia shield right tablet. Now supports Vulcan. That crappy old netbook that I have with R600 graphics supports Vulcan. So, uh, let me ask you. Years to come? What? <laughs> uh, hey, man, listen. I, I'm not going to poo-poo on the Godot project. Oh, this no, I'm not poo-pooing on the Godot project. I'm poo-pooing on that particular 
that, that that's what I want to make clear reasoning. because as yeah. soon as I read that, it's like, dude, I don't want to read the rest of this now because here's the thing, man. You know, the crux of the argument was, um, you know, using Vulcan is like, well, we got to keep mobile in mind. And, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, we love this project. We do nothing but say it's cool and it's awesome and we want more games to be made with it. But, you know, if you're not already getting everything in line to start using Vulcan for your mobile or metal for Apple, um, well, what's the point, man? I mean, that that's the future. It's not uh, OpenGL, oh, yeah. ELS. Uh, well, to be fair, Vulcan is very much based on OpenGL ES 3.1. That was like the origin of Vulcan. Um, and, well, Gato only supports OpenGL ES 3.1. Oh, so yeah. Point one makes all the difference. Well, I don't know. Just the thing with Godot is that like it's a learning engine. I, I honestly don't see it making, you know, nobody's going to build the next Grand Theft Auto five in Godot. It's just not it's not like that. Nope. I say, you know what? This guy was a little bit ignorant in his his Vulcan critique, but he also did just like re-architect the entire engine to make the OpenGL go faster. Oh, so, yeah, no, uh, again, maybe, maybe I Maybe we give him a little not, time and his opinions will come around. I will not throw shade at Godot at all. Godot is a very good engine for what it does. And all I want to see out of Godot is a good game, a mass appeal game, as it were. Something that a lot of people uh, like and say, oh, this game is made in Godot because actually the mainstream gaming community nowadays seems to care a lot about engines. Mostly it's Unity's it fault. There's a lot of <laughs> options. All we're saying, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is probably the first official release of Brick Simulator is not going to support Vulcan. No Vulcan. <laughs> no Vulcan. Sorry to report Ooh. that. So we got some good news, some mixed news from the blog. Uh, it seems like we can't go a week uh, without mentioning these fine, Oh yeah, it's fine. the weekly update. Yep. Our PCS3. Our, that's right, man. Uh, PS3 emulator on Linux that supports Vulcan. And it works very well. Uh, this is just their September 2017 progress report. We've seen some good things, man. I mean, you go from August to September, you go 403 completely playable games to 445. Uh, Lootable is up from 290 to 323. Yeah, playable. It, it's, it's getting there, man. They are making stupid, crazy progress with this but the fun thing oh there it is uh the legends of heroes check that business out running on the vulcans running on the there's Linux. all the persona 5 screenshots but oh yeah They're we talked gone. about that last week go back and watch that if you want networking number 3503 this is where i start getting worried because they've added the networking back in so this thing can get on youtube and all that but more importantly it can download patches and updates for games mm -hmm. and um you can go on the playstation store and download things i i i kind of feel like that is like that scene in lord of the rings where the eye of sauron goes and you know, <laughs> the, it's like it's sony like, oh, you want sony to come now? after you that's how you get sony to go after you basically yeah. man it does kind of worry and we talked about it in uh linux weekly daily wednesdays on the after shows and it's like sony do you know how much money you're leaving on the table if you just made a ps3 emulator because here's the thing brad i wanted to play uh dante's inferno i was like that looks kind of neat maybe i'll have some fun with that i went to see how those games are still over 20 bucks and i was like god mm -hmm. damn it i don't i'm not spending 20 bucks but if i could log in legitimately through their play store I probably would have spent nineteen ninety five or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, get an officially supported, or even if it's not supported, just an official version. Like, okay, here is the PS Store. It's got an emulator built in. We don't technically support it, but there you go. You can buy the games legitimately and play them. Oh, I would be all over that, oh. like really badly. Well, that, and that, that, that's the, kind the very of my last thing, screenshot man. on the the RPCS three post. Uh, it's got um, demon souls with like stupid. Uh, how do they say it? Uh, no, it's it's been like there's also a screenshot of demon souls running at thirty eight forty by twenty one sixty with sixteen times anisotropic filtering. So basically, you get to play demon souls 
with a much better image quality than you've ever been able to have anywhere. To so to, and th- there Tekken was actually a PC port of Demon's yep. Souls, wasn't there? And yeah, it's no, better there wasn't. The uh, Makes perfect uh, sense. Uh, Demon Souls was that one Souls game that never came out on even Windows, and it was kind of the reason that the um, that they ported a Demon Souls, uh, not Demon Souls, uh, Dark Souls to Windows because everyone was going, "Oh, we want to play that game," and that's probably also why the Dark Souls port on Windows was as shit as it was, <laughs> and it was infamously oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish them the best of luck. Also, um, kudos on them. They've reached their $3,000 a month patron goal. So, Oh, yes. Good for is, them. Good for them. Where's Why can't I play Shadow of the Colossus if, yet? It's it. more than if you want to tell us to eat it's a bag PS2, of dicks. It, it's fine. Fuck us. No, there's a, but there's support a those version. who support Linux, and they definitely do support Linux. Oh, yeah, they do. So what is this bullshit, man? Is this like – this looks like it belongs on a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> there or is definitely going to be, there is definitely pillows of something similar to this but this is not it this is taisei it is a japanese style bullet hell shmup type game where the thing that shoots the um the bullets sort of uh is a sort of anime girl yeah, there's a whole genre of these games. It's called Toho, uh, and this is a very crappy clone of Toho. I'm totally not sorry for what you just did to your Google suggestions after Googling for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get a lot of anime pillows is what I'm saying. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it is, uh, they literally say, Taisei uh, is a fan-made open source clone of the Toho series. Written in C using SDL and OpenGL. Basically, it's a shoot 'em up game with lots of bullets. Rah, 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 rah. That's, yeah, that's a, the best description I could give you of that game. And to be fair, it works. If you download it, it works. T Daddy, so, you. Uh, oh, may, maybe it worked for you, yeah, Pedro, but on, yeah. uh, on 1710, that was no such luck. Uh, oh. The app image immediately uh, exited with an error code negative one. <laughs> so I downloaded the deep file, installed that, which installed okay. But then the minute I tried to run it, it started complaining about uh, libsdl2 ttf not being installed. So I'm like, oh, I'll just hop into apt and install that. Oh, it's already installed? Uh, uh, yeah, how about we just uninstall okay. this and walk away? I've got <laughs> oh, enough. Oh, I've don't, got don't, enough don't, don't you love the moment when you realize that I don't care enough to start sim linking shit? <laughs> yeah, that's the, basically I got to that point where I was just right. like, if I cared, I could make this work. Right. But, eh, I just don't care. But no, yeah, I, I didn't understand what this was enough to bother to try to build it or anything like that, man. <laughs> Oh, it's, you say the uh, word schmuck to me and I get series, all excited. Uh, what it is, it's anime girls shooting things at other anime things on screen. Me. I'm excited. And, yeah, it's uh, one of those schmups that you, the hits only count if they hit the glowing bit on your character. That's it. But, yeah, it's just a schmup, a bullet hell schmup. I mean, it, does it include any pony physics? No. Damn. How about nudity? Does it have lots of nudity? <laughs> some uh, some fan Toho games have nudity, but <laughs> Soul. The, the official ones don't. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that's going to do it for the news. Coming up for the chair QA session, we're not playing Goku, we're playing Goken. It's um, an RPG that doesn't it's definitely suck. A thing. Hmm? It's definitely a thing. Let's find out. Let's go, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Chairquisition. The goal here is to score at least two chairs, which means your game is actually functional. And this week, what are we playing? Goken. It's kind of brilliant. I'm kind of new at this. This is not normally my intro, but um, it's currently on sale. Notice how they put that in there. Goken is an action-filled RPG where you... You're in the search for the Lost Five Swords. 
and maybe saving the world. Currently $14.99 wet stinky caches. It is out of early access and ready for your face organs. And we're going to try to see, well, how does it Linux? Joining me, Mr. Tian and Pedro Mateus. Pedro Spooky Mateus with his Hello. penguins behind him. But, as always, it must face the chairquisition, which I couldn't get sized up right in time. One chair means that it's crap. Two chairs means that you... All right, you did an all right job. It kind of runs three chairs. You probably want to check it out. Four chairs, just shut up. Don't listen to us. Go buy it and enjoy it. Rated on the categories of Doom, mixed with the working shiny and sounds, controls, and fun. So, gentlemen... Let's uh, rock out with our Goku's out. Goku's out. Uh, let's start this off empty. What are you running this business on, man? All right. We are on the uh, AMD Ryzen 1700X. And uh, GPU is a GTX 780 Ti. It actually ran pretty nicely, considering <clears throat> it's only 1080p scaled up to UHD. And... Uh, there's a bit of micro stuttering. Oh Even man, that. that's a, a I bit. Think, all right, a think, bit. A bit. <laughs> right. We all experience this. I'm on the Ryzen seven, not the uh, Ryzen seventeen hundred, not the seventeen hundred X. Sixteen gigajoules RAM with a nine eighty. Same micro stuttering that got progressively worse the more detailed the game got. Pedro. Yeah, uh, over here I'm on the FX eighty three seventy E. Still an AMD processor, but uh, much older. Uh, with the 1080, I don't think I ever saw it drop below 59 FERPs. Nope. But this is the perfect example of a game where frame pacing is very important because you can have uh, a frame rate above 60, still make a game feel slightly herky-jerky. And this is it. Uh, mm -hmm. It's... Uh, it's actually really noticeable, and I think it's loading something in the background because, admittedly, it does have like big open worlds. Each of the islands are very big, so I guess it is loading something in the background yeah. there, and that's what's causing it. I mean, it could. Uh, a couple other issues I noticed: no support for UHD thirty-eight forty by twenty-one sixty. It's just some bullshit that's in your imagination. It's not there. I didn't see it again with the frame. Jumping and like I said, part of the cheer acquisition, baby, uh, is to warn you about shit like this. This is a mm -hmm. legit problem. This should be on the front page. I personally would not have released the game. Doesn't just affect Linux. You go in their forums, oh, and yeah. you go, okay, this is a thing. It's like pinned at the top, and their bullshit solution to fix it is to drag your OpenGL settings all the way up to high performance. Which is, I'm sorry, don't don't let your um community manager say technical decisions like that because no, that's just bad so can we all agree that uh not a, it made with a working and it worked all right and i think we could have probably given it a clear bill of health at four chairs if it wasn't for that massive herky jerk and it's still playable people right oh it is absolutely yeah. and uh, very it, it is the herky jerky and the fact that the when i started the game at least for me the animations, the walking animations, and the attack animations were broken, so I just had my character sliding around until I restarted the game. Uh, so also yeah. a bug. Okay, that's something we were talking about in our pre-pre super shows. And it's like, yeah, yeah. everything issue you run into this game, just go to their forums. It's it's listed there. It's so. already there. They know. Yep. <laughs> they, they need to do a little bit of love, but yeah, for makes with the working, we're gonna be able to throw that a solid three moving three chairs on. all across the board. A little bit more of a subjective category. That's our shiny and sounds. I'm just going to say, you know, I actually dug the soundtrack for this. It is like some hip hop. Japanese fusion with a little extra record scratching going on in there. Kind of dug it. I, I wasn't exactly bopping out to it, but I didn't mind it at all, which is a nice change. And most importantly, this thing's hella pretty. I mean, very well yes. animated. W w tell me. D all right. W what did you think? Like when you had your establishing shot and it opened and we're not going to give away any spoilers, but you start off like yeah. at the top of a hill. It's like, uh, all right, then you move your yeah, character. It looks all sketched and everything. Yeah, yeah, right, mm -hmm. and they're like jumping around. And then you move your character, and you're just like, holy shit, this, that's oh, beautiful. That, that is very, very Yeah, well they've done. managed to make an isometric game that looks 
very, very good. And I guess if I had to find something that I didn't enjoy when it comes to the aesthetics, it's, well, it goes back to my old spiel about aesthetics serving only to complement the mechanics. More on that later. Uh, and we've had many examples right here on the Chairquisition of games which fall on both sides of that. You have, like, say, Aragami, which takes uh, aesthetics uh, as the most important thing and the mechanics fail for it. And then on the other side, you have something like, I don't know, Steven Sausage Roll. Mm -hmm. That's probably where, where it favors mechanics. The only game on Linux made out of sausage and spite. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, it favors oh, mechanics for all the way, $20. and the aesthetics aren't really all that great. Gokan's biggest failure in this department specifically is how the visual feedback for combat is pretty much non-existent. Because unless you're paying attention to your health bar, you can't really tell just how much damage you've taken. And or even in a if game you've been like hit this, at all. Yeah, in a game like this, it looks really... Well, it doesn't look like anything. It just doesn't work properly. And that's really, really annoying. Um, I guess the only other thing is the slightly jaunty camera angle. Because this is an isometric game. You can't really move the camera around. No, but it, it does have, definitely has that irritating thing. Of, you know everything's rendered in 3D, so you should be able to. Yeah, you really should be able to. And you really ought to be able to. But you that can't. Was, so. Hey, man. That, that was like one of the things with the Daisiga. Or Daisega, whatever the, you know, the Japanese... Disgaea. Disgaea, whatever the hell it's called. Yes. Uh, you could at least <laughs> rotate the camera, and they were able to do that on the PS2. So yes. don't, don't tell me this is a technical impossibility. But yeah, at this with this game, specifically with Goken, it's really hard to predict whether or not your the, the swings of your swords are going to connect because of that jaunty camera angle. That's the <laughs> other complaint I have. It's also really hard to tell if the bad guys are going to hit you or not, because you can move two pixels to the side mm -hmm. and they'll mm -hmm. miss you. No, and the, the, the music is good. I, I like the music. I did eventually turn it off and just go with the sound effects. But uh, the music is nice. The one area where this game fell down is when you go down to the beach in the very first area. Mm -hmm. The transition effect between the sand and that's, the water is jarring. literally a transparency fade. Mm -hmm. And for a game that is so beautiful and then you run into such an ugly effect, it, it's a little bit jarring. Speaking uh, of jarring, that's something uh, with the soundtrack. I notice when you get to the first village, if you leave the village, there is no fade for that background because you have like oh, the danger no, on it. It, it, just like, boop, it. it just jumps well, right into that next. That's track. what I was about to say is this game seems like it could have used a little bit more polish and it would have been a four chair. Oh, game. yeah, Absolutely. But they, they have some little problems, and those little problems make it into a three-chair game. All right, Very three much. chairs for shinies and sounds. Now we talk about the controls, because, you know, something like this, you definitely want to play it with your controller organ and break that business out. You got a Steam controller. I did it with my X clone. What, what did you play with? I was on the Xbox 360 controller. All right, mm -hmm. same difference. Uh, Pedro, am I wrong? Correct me if I'm right. Uh, not fully rebindable controls. No, no, they don't. If you have a controller, the only uh, rebinding you can do is through Steam Big Picture Mode, and you actually rebind the controller for this game specifically using the Steam Overlay. And kudos to Valve for that, but that doesn't really get this game any bonus points. Another thing that this game does is... Um, the default controller mapping has the A and B button functions reversed from what you usually expect. This isn't exactly new when it comes to Japanese video games, because anyone who's ever played uh, a game that they were probably supposed to play, which was, say, a Japanese import of a game based on an anime well i mean this game it, comes from japan but i mean seriously wh why maintain the fuckery did is there not an option to at least <laughs> flip that bullshit that there is, is. Uh, there is uh if you go to the options menu you can switch between two different controller types and literally all it does is switch the a to b behavior and it uh by default it has b to confirm and a to go back 
Which is completely that, no. backwards and insane. It is, yeah. but by, by the time I realized that that was even a legitimate option, I had taught myself how to play this game the way they wanted it to be played. And normally I would, you know, blow it away with like minus two chairs on this mm-hmm. for not rebondable controls, but everything it's just fucking laid out outside of that bullshittery, which, yeah, all right, I'll give you a little bit of character for that. Outside of that, everything else, like the only other game that everything was like, boom, okay, everything makes sense was like Victor Vran. Yeah, everything here is where I would have fucking put it. Now again, it's just my opinion, but I'm still gonna ding it one chair on that. It's gonna get a three for me, man. It's still workable. Now, uh, uh, one thing I will bring up: sometimes interacting with things like pressing the B button to interact. Going oh, you in, have to uh, be standing still. You got to be standing yeah. still. Sometimes facing just to hit the right just pixels in order for that prompt A to show up or B, uh, no pun intended, to damn work. <laughs> The other yeah, small no, for, complaint that I'll have is that you can walk around using the analog stick, but the minute you go into any menus, you better use that D-pad or your keyboard because it does not accept analog <laughs> stick inputs in nope. any of the menus. Mm. That's a, yeah, that's a me, very small uh, nitpick, but it I'm did actually, I, I would give this one four chairs on the controls because, yes, the default configuration is a bit stupid with A being what you expect B to be and B being what you expect A to be. Uh, but yeah, it gives you the option to just get it back to a sensible controller layout. And sure, you can't rebind it in-game. On the controller, you can rebind the regular um, if you're playing with a mouse and keyboard. This is one of those games that I would say, why? Uh, but yeah. Why would you Here, play this I on would a mouse give it and keyboard? Chairs. What's wrong with you? <laughs> You're talking to somebody who plays racing games with a. I do. I play Dirt Rally and um, Distance and Grid Auto Sport with the keyboard. Anyway, so you're going to walk away with three chairs total. If we're going to balance that out with controls. So pretty good. They're workable. Do keep in mind, not completely configurable. But considering this is coming out of a air quotes around quirky Japanese development studio. Yes. And built on Unity. One that, built so on we're Unity. doing okay. Yeah, yeah, this is the least of their bullshit. So mm-hmm. um, let's round this out, gentlemen. Uh, TN, what did you think? Did you have fun with it? I actually had a surprising amount of fun. Uh, I immediately went back to my glory days of Super Nintendo JRPG uh, Secret of Mana style geeking out, running around grinding, killing monsters. I was having a regular, lovely time till the game soft locked on me and I decided to put it down for a while. But uh, honestly, this is uh, this is a good game. I liked this game. I will be playing this game There's more. a lot of I fun I want to see where here. it goes. Yeah. It, oh, they, yeah. They got the reward system right with the grinding stuff because it's like every time you get to the point, oh, here's a new sword or oh, here's some more ink to upgrade this. And mm-hmm. it does it it's paced very well pedro oh yes it is and it the way that they do like the progression of the swords when you update them it's very it feels very organic it isn't they very clearly wanted you to only be able to upgrade your swords at certain points and that's kind of how you can tell that the game has been done by Someone who knows what they're doing when they're developing a video well, game. It's and good. I mean, who's... All right, the progression, you get your you start with your basic sword, then you get the big ass yeah. broadsword, then they give you just a little fucky thing that's useless. The Kunai knives, yes. <laughs> and it really only good in uh, certain circumstances. It's, you can feel free to ignore the Kunai knives, because at least as far as I've played, it they're completely pointless. But the way that the the light sword and the heavy sword work. It is, it feels very good to play with. And I guess going back to what I said in the Shiny and Sounds, um, I said that aesthetics should serve to complement game mechanics. And I've said that many times. And when it, to me specifically, video games live and die on their mechanics and mm-hmm. how you interact with those mechanics. Because that's the one thing that makes this particular medium different it's, from it's the say, game that's what the game is yeah it's, it's, it's a video game mechanics. it's not a movie it's not a book it's not a graphic novel it's nothing like that it's a game so 
while some of the visual elements are lacking and others are outright nah, lacking or not man it's still a beautiful fucking game man. it is uh, uh, but the mechanics themselves which is what i care about when it comes to a video game are solid i don't know and man it depends on what day of week it is with you it's like oh yeah no 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 i hate it i, I have it been doing my best to define exactly what it is i like about video games and the devil's in the details. I don't so to know, speak. man. I'm digging this, man. It's like that JRPG game we got and Torchlight had a fucking baby. I dig the story. I think it's fucking interesting. Like I said, the, logical character, weapon progression. You got me interested, except for that third one. I don't know what the fuck you were thinking with that. Maybe there's a use. <laughs> the ink system. You get your tattoos. You get your buffs and all that yep. shit. The good thing about the buffs, man, one thing I really dug at the end of the day, take that shot, was you can kind of take them or leave them. If you just want to sit down and get fucking good, son... You could fuck this game up without using, you know, your rage oh, yeah. buffs or your fucking anti poisons and all that. You just got to be a goddamn ninja is what you got to be. Yeah. Boss yeah, battles, you got to admit, a bit on the fucking primitive side, man. You learn their patterns, you boop them out. I didn't really get curb stomped until I ran into question mark. Trust me, you'll run into maybe her, maybe him. I don't know. It doesn't really tell you, man, what I'd like to see in those boss battles. However... Is a bit more hit back because all you got right now, they move back just a tiny bit and they blink a tiny bit red, which doesn't always happen because it's a little buggy system. Sometimes you don't know if you're skull fucking them or not and they turn around one shot your ass and you're just all dead and shit going, where's the popcorn? Does it have issues? Absolutely, fucking lootly it does. But at the end of the day, again, this game's completely savable and I think maybe given a month or two, the developers getting their shit together, ironing out those little picks of nits, uh... We definitely got something that I could absolutely recommend picking up. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Uh, uh, absolutely. Going back, uh, uh, one of the things that this game does is it has, at least on the first island, I haven't played the second island all that much yet because I've been going back and getting everything on the first island. It's when you go back <laughs> that to poor earlier game. Of areas, course you are, you goddamn kleptomaniac. I am. I am a little bit, yes. <laughs> but the, what it does is it does the Metroidvania thing where it forces you to go back to the early, early areas if you want to go across the, the so you, whole map. you get the new skill and it mm -hmm. unlocks new areas. Yeah, and, and area you realize you just how much stronger you are now because you're going through that same area and you remember, oh, I everything. had a lot of issues with this particular Oh, hell yeah. When you're going here. back and you're like, you can just spite boop shit. And yeah, it's just like one hit and they're dead. Oh, yeah. That's good. I mean, <laughs> that that helps the player yourself. who's like, oh, shit. You know, uh, fuck all you yeah. 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 Um, and again, with the story, you know, there's a lot of reading. They didn't bother trying to give you some really shit voice acting. Kudos to that. Oh, they Just, didn't give you shit voice acting, but they give you a lot of shit dialogue. Hey, <laughs> that man. was cringy at points. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I think the dialogue's borderline cringy, but it, it's not so bad that... It's not... A half, it's not plus like, you can uh, just mash and get right awful, through it. It's not, but really. it's, it's bad, yeah. But I'm, I'm trying to check out the story because, again, man, I mean, the story's like kind of interesting. I'm like, okay, but you well, do have to read the text if because they'll tell you what you have to do next. Oh, if yeah, if you don't read yeah. that, you are lost and you're just gonna wander around until you stumble on your objective. So, I uh, think, um, put together, we're gonna be able to give a solid three on this. A lot Easily. of threes going out. We don't normally get to do that because uh, mm -hmm. if we can throw out our actual chair acquisition, this thing gets a total of three. This is a, one of the rare. Not only does it mostly work, uh, it's actually kind of fucking good, right? Yeah, it is. And it is very much a an indie Japanese team mm -hmm. going at it and saying, you know what? Here's our game. Have that. It, and they put it out on Linux. They did. That's they did the Linux. Awesome. That's good on them. And I mean, it's it kind of feels like it's try, it hits the retro stuff, but it's not going hipster pixel, man. I mean, it, it's yeah. got its own look. It looks good. It's got a very nice hand-drawn mixed with 3D right. kind of aesthetic. And it's nice. It's like, uh, imagine uh, if your SNES had a uh, 1080 in it. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's probably where you'd be at the end of the day. But Pretty much. What is this yeah, thing they, If in? they get around to fixing the performance, uh, the frame pacing issues, that 
that would make this a very good game. I gotta say, fourteen ninety nine. Mm, maybe now that's right in the middle there between the twenty pretentious indie wannabe bullshit and the ten usual indie game. If you can deal with the frame jerking for now, that's a damn deal. At nineteen ninety nine, oh, yeah. this would still be a good purchase. I gotta say, and uh, it's been real. We will um, disappear and turn back into chairs for next week. But coming up next, I'm going to throw it to Pedro all of a sudden so he can explain. Well, up next, we have you, the things you had to say over the past week. I think. Horrifying. Terrifying. Horrifying. Petrifying. <laughs> Well, would you look at that? Look at the time. We've been here for a long, long while, and we've been shouting in your direction. So chances are you probably have to... You have just that little something that you need to get out of your head and put it in ours. Mm. So, hey, we're giving you the platform to do that. You can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, Make sure to click on the uh, little drop downy thing. It says LGC Weekly. That's where you send your hate mail. If you want some, to throw some feedback at that Wednesday show, what Ven and I do, you can do that. You can send us some keys for review. You can ask Jordan for relationship advice if you want. Or if you just have something which doesn't really fit into any of those categories, there's. Hey man, there. Uh, maybe maybe we should change the other category to incoherent ramblings. <laughs> I, that would be most of them. Most of them. Just right. forward your but email yeah. right in there. Just it's just a matter of picking out whichever one you think is the most relevant for you at that particular point in time and filling out the rest of the form. It's pretty easy. If you are uh, sending us uh, or a request for a game. To review, make sure to include three keys or, Mm -hmm. I don't know, uh, humble keys, seam keys, GOG keys. I don't know if GOG actually Keys is a generic term in 2017. You know what the fuck we mean. So we suggest you do that. And do keep in mind, there's only 52 weeks in a year. And we already have well over a year of games that we haven't even fucking looked at yet. So we understand that your game is very important to you. But there's no guarantees. Yes. All right. So. So. Let's see. First Doug. up, we have Doug going. I like the round table change to the chair acquisition. Uh, maybe with that little bit of extra discourse, you could have shamed Jordan into not spoiling Hollow Knight's deserved four chairs. Thanks, Jordan. Uh, well, I guess Ooh, Jordan's not here tonight, so it's the perfect Jordan. Time. Oh, fuck yeah, Jordan's yeah, not here. Let's throw a motherfucker under the bus. So. Oh, the Canadian. Oh. Uh, shit, man. Uh, listen, we, we, we made him go to the North Pole for a month. <laughs> so he, he is Without being punished. Um, yeah, the round table, uh, we're, we're evolving. We're, we're doing some things. We're making a point not to change shit for the sake of change we're just trying new things we can always go back we can always go forward you know it's a yeah project it's in the works. Just, uh if you are watching us right now and you have something to add to doug's thing let us know it's actually part of the hate mail which we don't awfully talk about because we really do like when we get something wrong or you think we got something wrong and you want to shout in our direction that's what we do here but by all means, do feel free to throw in some feedback as well. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'll throw in my uh, two cents here and say that I'm okay with the roundtable format. There's no reason to have a, like an artificial structure enforced on it for, for no reason. Uh, and I don't know if it's perfected yet, but uh, whatever. Yeah. Work in progress. Yeah, it probably needs a little bit more mayonnaise. So, <laughs> Julian... A lot bit more mayonnaise. Writes in. He's like, hi, folks. Is it possible to give Super Tux Cut some reviews again in the Saturday show? Uh, since they... Ouch. Since they switching to the new engine, it has the ability to be a new selling and die game. Also, multiplayer seems to work. Kind regards. Julian. Um... If the multiplayer works, I didn't hear anything about the multiplayer. Me neither. I was going to ask. It's like, when did 
when did they add multiplayer? Yeah, I'm just saying, Brad. Yeah, when did you throw that multiplayer in? I mean, if they got multiplayer working, shit, son, that's some after show yeah, stuff. We, right we've there. been least. Be nice to have an open source if they got uh, multiplayer, multiplayer after show game. Uh, usually, when it comes to uh, Another. floss games, open source games, we wait for point releases. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, they are there on Steam be. now, so I guess it would behoove them to actually up keep the game up to date. Maybe uh, it would definitely be a thing. I mean, because you're going to get shit. When you do yeah. an open sauce game, like, well, it's not fair. It's not ready. It's only at one point, whatever, or it's not at one point oh. And I'm like, the game's been in development for nine years. It's uh, been through four different engines. Okay, right. it's like it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. not ready. It, you, you can't fucking win on that one. Yeah. So I don't know if it's got multiplayer. One point oh is looks, always one engine rewrite away. Oh man, high overgrowth. Uh, exactly. Dude, I I don't know, man. I mean, if they've significantly changed it, if they got multiplayer in, yeah, I would definitely take another look for it. Yeah. Uh, is it currently on Steam available to download? I don't know if it's already oh, available, publicly available, but they did get greenlit. Mm. So. Ah. I don't know, man. I mean, if they get the uh, multiplayer up and working, that's something uh, we'll... Steamworks integration? We'll be playing with it next week. If they do, you will know. But, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think uh, on that bombshell, it is time to cue the music, and one day, eventually, I'll have that queued up instead of putting it in post, because it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but... You can always find me if you want to talk to me. If you want to follow me, do it. um, At Vinstone. On Twitter nets, it's a thing. It's kind of brilliant. Pedro's looking confused, but then again, when is he not? Uh, admittedly, very rarely. I have absolutely no shame in admitting that I'm an idiot. So, if you want to scream at this particular idiot, that's plus Peter Mateusz on Google Plus at an accounted for that's F O U R on Twitter. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, and I'm Mike <laughs> Tian. <laughs> you can find me at plus Mike Tehan on Google Plus, and also I think I have a Twitter too. Was it's like Leprechaun it for Life or something like that? Literally in your lo- on your calendar. I don't know. I've never checked it. Leprechaun so. for Life. <laughs> I cleverly hidden right there. Beautiful people, sit back and relax, and uh, check out some credits as we close out mm-hmm. the show. We have right. credits this week. Hey, I remember to do them. They're kind of brilliant. But hey, man. You support the show, so we kind of want to be like throw you a little extra with our super janky, super super janky, but whatever. Very janky. I mean, my face is dirtier than usual. I'm pretty sure I already <laughs> made that joke in the pre pre shows, but hey, this, uh, trying it again. Uh, Why not? We're just doing it again. Almost man. got a laugh the first time. Because you know, you know, somebody's looking at it right now, and they're just like, "Oh, I gotta say, it needs to be fixed." It's like I just didn't feel like doing double uh, color keys, so. <laughs> Why would, why would just for that transitional black to white to read the gray thing. I don't know, mine's yeah. Yeah, no, you can see this is my face. Uh, how can you tell the difference? You can't see my face. <laughs> I'm, I'm lost. You're eating I'm all obscured. the credits, man. You're taking it right in the teeth. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Open your mouth, empty. They're going in there. <laughs> we'll thank Atomic Ass again for. You caught him right there at the first part. And Executive Hertz. producer. Yep. Hertz is the new Patreon, so thank you all very, very much. All of you. Pablo, there's oh, actually Oh, shit. A Pablo, Let's see if I remember. Patreon yeah, person. I did. I remember to put Hertz in there. That was a gamble. Uh, <laughs> true story, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. Or tell what? Dianify. We'll see you next week. Five dudes.